Hey, welcome to video three of lesson nine. And we're just going to go jump back to lesson, I mean, number two in your book for just a second, because I wanted to make sure that you noticed that we're multiplying one fourth of four fifths. Do you notice that our fours are the same here? Right? So also in number two, I'm sorry, number three, one fifth I wanted to go back to number three. There we go. One eighth of eight ninths. Notice once again, we have an eight in the denominator and then an eight in the numerator. That's why this works because we're taking an eighth of eight of something. And here we're taking a fourth of four of something. So we have matching numbers, but look at this one. One fifth of 10 elevenths one-fifth of ten elevenths. So this is different, right? Because here we have a ten. But do you notice something about that ten? Five times two is ten. So these are, uh, ten is a multiple of five. So one-fifth of ten elevenths. So let's imagine that we have a bunch of elevenths here and that we have 10 of them, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And that would be 11 elevenths, right? We have 10 elevenths, 10, elevenths and we want one fifth of ten elevenths well we know there's ten so that means that in each fifth there's going to be two one fifth equals two and how do i know that because i can put two into each fifth see that one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, five-fifths, because five times two is ten. So one-fifth of ten is two, and one-fifth of ten-elevenths is two-elevenths. All right, so there's two inside of there. All right, like I said, if this is blowing your mind, that's a good thing. You're growing your brain. Don't get discouraged. All right? Now let's see, can we, oops, sorry, got to clean off the screen for sure. Okay. Um, so if we look back at number two that we were just talking about and how we said that one fourth of four is one and one fourth of four fifths is one fifths. But what if we wanted to use our unit language instead to multiply? What if we did it that other way and we did one fourth times one fifth? This is what we mean by unit language because we're using our ones and then we'll multiply that answer times four. So that would be one twentieth, right? One fourth times one fifth is one twentieth times four which would make four twentieths. But we said the answer was one fifth. So which one is correct? One times four is four and one times five is twentieth. So they are equivalent fractions. They are the same. All right, so we can do it by unit language, changing four fifths to one fifth times four, or we can do it um, the other way by thinking about the parts, right? Um, okay, very good. And we have another slide to look at and sort of wrap this all up together. There we go. Okay, we have four different problems here. And 
we can find a product of fractions in different ways, right? We've explored lots of different simpler problems, well, two different ways, right? Which one do you think you could do um, by known product, which is where you know the answer of a simpler problem, and then you multiply it by the number, like maybe this one, right? That one looks like a known product to me because I'm thinking about one-fifth times one-fourth times three, right? Okay, make sure you're writing this down somewhere for your notes. So one-fifth times one-fourth is one-twentieth times three. And remember, this is like a whole number three, so it would be over one because we have three-fourths. That's one-fourth. That's three of them, right? So that would be three-twentieths, all right? Just another way of looking at things. What about, um, let's go down here to this one, one-third and seven-tenths. So one-third times one-tenth is one-thirtieth, and then seven of them would be seven-thirtieths, okay? Now these two are a little bit more difficult, right? Um, let's start with this one, a little bit easier, six-sevenths of one-third. What if we switch these two around because we have the commutative property of multiplication and we could do one third of six sevenths. And the reason I did that is because we want our denominator here and our numerator here to be in a fact family, right? Remember? So let's um, draw a tape diagram of six sevenths. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six lines make seven parts, but I'm only interested in six of them. And then one third, because three times two is six, I know that two pieces are going to make one third, right? So two of them to what? Two sevenths, right? One third of six sevenths would be two sevenths. All right, now what about one ninety third of ninety three hundred and seventeenths? It's almost hard to even draw, right? Definitely. But if I'm thinking about, I'm not going to draw it all out. I'm just going to say, imagine that this is 117, right? And I have 93 of them. You know how we sometimes do dot, 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 right? So there's 93 parts, and I only need 1 93rd of them. That would be one of them, right? One a hundred and seventeenth. So one ninety third of ninety three hundred and seventeenths is one a hundred and seventeenths. Wow. Yeah. Pretty amazing. All right. Well, thanks for your kind attention and work hard. Come see me if you have a question and aloha.